Yo, what's going on, Warriors? Your boy's back. I'm tired, man. I'll tell you that much. Long day. I want to do a review on Final Fantasy XV Kingsglaive. Now, I thought if I don't do this video now, I'm never going to do it. So, I've got some time now. And we're going to get into it. Let's do it. So, first, I'm going to do a spoiler-free review. Spoiler-free review goes as... This is going to be under a minute. Kingsglaive Final Fantasy is absolutely... Godlike. The more times you watch it, the more times you will love it. It is so important to watch this if you are going to play Final Fantasy XV. And even if you're not, it's a Godlike standalone movie. I give this movie an easy 9 out of 10. The movie is Godlike. Go watch it. Spoiler free review is done. I told you it's going to be under a minute. Now we're going to go in and talk at the movie properly. So. Let's talk about some of the characters. We have Regis, who is the king of Lucius, the Lucius Empire. And the main place that we're looking at is Insomnia. And then we have the, the, what are they called again? The Niflheim, Niflheim. And essentially they are like the antagonists. They basically hold magic, magitech, which is like machines that are controlled with some kind of magical powers or whatever and they have um, monsters and they even control like weapons man like these things that they call demons or demons or whatever these demons are blatantly like biological versions of weapons like the Omega weapon, Emerald weapon, Ruby weapon from the Final Fantasy 7 series like if you look at the design it's uncannily similar except that these ones look like they are kind of like created you know so you have those you have king regis i mentioned regis you have luna frey who is the princess of tenebrae you have noctis who's in there for a little bit you have another guy called arden isuni or isuna or whatever he's like the chancellor of the niflheim empire you have the emperor of the niflheim empire you have a guy called libertus who's like the best friend of the main character who's called um, Nyx Aldrich. You have another woman who's called Crow. She's part of the King's Glaive. She's um, kind of like a, one of the best friends of Libertus and Nyx. Who else do we have? We have the captain who's called Titus Doravus or whatever his name is. Some guy called Titus. He's basically the captain of the King's Glaive. Uh, who else do we have? Those kind of covers it for like the most important characters. If another important character comes to my mind, I'll mention them. So, this basically is where the Niflheim Empire, they want to take the crystal. The crystal is what they generate a power that they call the New Ward. The New Ward essentially protects the Lucius Empire from outside invaders, aka Niflheim. Niflheim want to take the crystal, because the crystal is the source of great magical power. And the crystal basically gets its power from King Regis. Whoever sits on the throne, they basically have to use their life force as a medium for the crystal to create the new wall. And then there is another barrier. If anybody manages to get past the new wall, there is a, another wall called the old wall. And the old wall consists of basically past kings and basically it's a forbidden power that is sealed inside of a ring that King Regis wears. And you see Noctis wearing it. If you look at the Afro Jack trailer that they released, I think it was at E3 or something like that. Godlike trailer. Godlike trailer. Yeah. And you see Noctis putting on a ring. And it's where he says, leave it to me, um, old man, talking to his dad. I'll take care of it. Yeah. That ring is absolutely godlike. That to put that ring on, you have to be next levels of godlike. And the old wall that is sealed in that ring, they are essentially knights of the round. They are godlike. Stop. Like the end fight on its own, when it was Nyx versus this guy called General Gulka. He is like the general of the Niflheim military. Um, you know, military force right and it kind of doesn't make sense to me because the guy that's actually 
General Golkar, he's like blatantly the powerfulest opponent of the Niflheim Empire, apart from the Empire, that infiltrates or tries to basically fuck with the Lucius Empire. He is. The end fight is basically Nix Aldrich and the Old Wall versus General Gunka and the demons. I call them the weapons, right? Uh, the fight was mind-blowingly godlike. I absolutely cannot even describe, I can't put into words how godlike that fight was. The movie was godlike. It makes me hype for the main game because if that's what the main character can do and he's not even the proper legitimate bloodline and he couldn't even, because if you notice, he couldn't use the weapons that the old wall had. There was a lot of things that he couldn't do. The only thing that he had is look like he had like, he was powered up. He could control the old wall. He could do more powerful electrical blasts. He was faster. He had much more stamina. His wounds had healed and he was stronger. And he could, he could take like mad, mad damage. Right? He was almost godlike. Right? As in like godly power. Pretty much. Right? So, movie was godlike. Uh, the fight was astounding. Like, mind blowing. There were certain things that irritated me, right? Like, you had the guy that was called General Golka. He was actually Titus, who's the captain of the Kingsclave. Kingsclave is essentially a group of soldiers that were recruited, they are all immigrants, from neighbouring nations of Lucius. And basically, what was his name again? King Regis took them because he saw that they had a special affinity and they could wield the power of the king. So basically all the power of the king, the kings they can use, but they can only use ability where they can teleport. They can basically throw their rings, teleport, they become invisible, um, you know, they're, they're trained, you know, they have everything they want, like, they have homes, they have everything, but they only because, oh, they only have that because they're in the King's Blade. So, you have the guy that is Titus, who's the captain, but he's actually General Golka as well. So, he works for the Niflheim Empire, and it makes no sense to me. I mean, he explains why, but his reason is bullshit. Why the fuck would you work for the enemy that has killed neighbouring villages, your town, nations that you love and your people why the fuck would you work for them for 12 plus years because when Niflheim was infiltrating and trying to destroy Tenebrae which is Stella's Stella called her Stella Luna Frey Luna's and um, Luna Nox Frutu or Frey or whatever however you pronounce her name right when they were infiltrating her place yeah General Coco was there it made no sense to me why the fuck is he working with Niflheim? And then there was a bit in it where they kidnapped Luna Frey. Luna Frey is a god-like character. She wasn't a feeble, weak woman, right? Like Black Widow in Avengers. What was the one where they made her like real soft? I think it was Age of Ultron. I might be mistaken, but whatever, who cares? So basically, you had she wasn't like that. She was essentially a Bayonetta. She was a Black Widow from Iron Man 2. She was a legitimate woman. Like a proper woman. Like she was brave. She didn't irritate me. She was strong. She wasn't dependent on the man. She wasn't a victim. She was Luna Frey. She was sick. Luna Knox Frey. I think that's how you say her name. Right? And there was a scene in the movie, right? There was a scene where you saw... Luna talking to Nyx and it looked to me like it was the scene that was in the 2013 version of Final Fantasy Versus where you saw Stella when Luna was Stella and she was talking to Noctis and you saw the statue, the picture of the Etro and it just looked like they had taken that bit out of the game now and there was a bit where you saw, remember there was a, two, there was a trailer where you saw Noctis fighting in Lucius, fighting against like the Leviathan and against the Niflheim Empire. That's taken out because Noctis could never get into the city. So it just looks like the King's Slave is basically all the parts of Final Fantasy XV that they had to change in order to make it work with the new narrative. Because you know a lot of things have changed with Stella, with um, Etro, with everything like that. 
So yeah, man. I mean, the movie is absolutely godlike, man. I mean, it had like little things that irritated me. As I said, like there was a bit where the whole King's Day pretty much betrayed the Lucius Empire, Regis, and they just started killing each other. Like, why the fuck are? When did they get like that? Like, legitimately, the King's Glaive started to rebel against the King's Glaive and the Lucius Empire. And it was just stupid. You're thinking, why so fucking drastic? But it was a godlike movie, man. Other than that, movie is godlike. I guarantee, I'll give that film a 9 out of 10. I'll give the old wall versus the weapons a 9 out of 10, a 10 out of 10 for the fights alone. I bought the movie. I've already, I've already pre ordered the collector's, the um, Ultimate Collector's Edition. But I bought the Xbox version, I bought it on Xbox, but digitally, just to support. So if you want to have nice things, look man, pick up the Blu-ray, you can get it digitally, it's coming out on Blu-ray soon. So yeah man, I just say I recommend it, go check it out, and let me know what you think about the movie. Alright Warriors, I'm bloody exhausted, uh, thanks for watching and see you guys soon. Later Warriors!